Ever since Apple launched their M1 based MacBooks in like the fall of 2020, I've had a very tough time recommending any kind of Intel based laptop for regular users. I'm not talking about gaming laptops, I'm just talking about regular laptop computing. And it all stems from the fact that Intel had terrible power efficiency over the past few years, to the point where not only did I not want to waste my time covering that stuff, I don't want to waste your time. I'm not going to show you a product that I think just doesn't even compete in that product space. If you look, I didn't do a lot of videos over the past few years of Intel based like light ultrabooks, but it all changes today because Intel launches their core ultra products. And this chip is completely new, like a new fabrication uses Intel four. It's got new architecture, new chip design. It's a completely brand new beast. They say they have a powerful and very energy efficient chip this time around. So better performance while using less power than previous generation. Secondly, they say they have a very powerful GPU. So twice the performance per watt compared to the previous generation. And then thirdly, this chip that's inside these products has a built in NPU, a neural processing unit to handle local AI computations. And these chips are so much better than what they've had in the past. It just, it redefines what the company is capable of. And I also think it changes the way that this type of chip can be used. So I was able to test out two different devices, but both with the same chip, the Core Ultra 7 155H. So the first device is this one here, the ZenBook 14 OLED. This is a very thin and very compact device. And because it's running the new Meteor Lake chip, it is very performant and it's got an amazing screen. This is a 120 Hertz OLED panel. It's like strange to see a high refresh screen on something like this. You can game on this device now. And also we have the MSI Prestige 16. This is a slightly larger device also with an OLED panel, but it's a 16 inch screen. And because it's so big, you can have a completely different kind of thermal characteristic because it's just got more room in there. So the fans are a little more powerful and just it's got a more capable thermal system because they are two different systems. I was able to see this chip under various conditions. All right, some benchmarks. So for CPU performance, the core ultra seven gets a nice bump up compared to the 13th gen chips, but they don't score as high as I was hoping for them to, but they do outperform Apple's M2's products, at least in these synthetic benchmarks. And then for graphics performance, the new Intel Arc graphics are way better than the previous generation. In some benchmarks, it's literally double what they used to have. And then compared to what AMD has, it beats the 7080M in some benchmarks, but then loses it in others. Now, when you adjust the power limit settings on these devices, you can kind of get a sense of what the Core Ultra 7 can do in various conditions. And because the ZenBook is so much thinner and lighter, it caps out at a 28 watt power limit. The MSI, because it's a little bit bigger, it caps out at 32 watts. And despite that difference in wattage, the performance is really similar between the two devices, which is excellent to see because it means that you don't need to have a really powerful thermal system to take advantage of this chip. Like some of the older Intel chips, the spread of performance between like a well-cooled one and one that wasn't well-cooled was massive, which was irritating for the consumer because you're like, I want a smaller system, but if I get a smaller system that doesn't have crazy fans, I'm just losing a whole bunch of performance because it's not really taking advantage of the chip. But here you can tell, same chip, completely different thermal capabilities on these systems, very similar performance. It's almost like a MacBook, right? That's a good thing. The 14 inch MacBook, 16 inch MacBook, like the pros, very similar in performance, despite a very different kind of chassis shape and size. Okay, let's talk about battery life. Now with the previous generation of Intel chips, if you took those and you compared them with what AMD and Apple have, they were not competitive at all. Like Intel's products looked like a complete joke when it came to battery life compared to the competition. It really seemed bizarre that a company of that size and that kind of pedigree could make something that was so underperformant when it came to battery life. But now core ultra laptops seem to be way better. And I think it addresses the main pain point of Intel's laptops over the past three years. Now, when these systems are being pushed, like if you're editing a bunch of photos or something, battery life is close between the three competitors. So Intel, AMD and Apple all pull a similar kind of wattage draw at that top end. But when you're idle or when you have very light tasks, Apple Silicon is very energy efficient. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when it comes to battery comparison, because there haven't been a ton of AMD offerings, like not a lot of systems use AMD chips, it was actually really difficult to find a comparable system to stuff like this. Like a lot of AMD systems out there have much bigger batteries because they're just bigger systems and like gaming laptops, right? So you gotta be just careful in how you do the comparison if you kind of look into this stuff yourself. Okay. Gaming performance is good, like way better than anything they've ever offered in the integrated GPU space before, but it didn't blow my mind. I think it's pretty much on par with what the 7080M does from AMD, 
better in some scenarios, and you do have access to Intel's XESS technologies, I think that overall I'm very satisfied. There's just a part of me that was hoping it'd be even better. But again, early days in the drivers, so we'll see how that pans out over time. Now lastly, I wanna talk about the whole idea of AI on this chip. So when they first announced this AI element to Meteor Lake, I thought, oh my God, here we go again. Another company hopping onto the AI bandwagon. But it turns out they've actually partnered with a bunch of developers to work on AI enhanced features for applications to really take advantage of this NPU. It seems like it has a lot of potential, but it does require developers to commit to something long-term with Intel. So we'll have to see how that pans out over time. Now, my takeaway on this, there's a couple things here. First, Intel finally has something competitive. I mean, for years, Intel just had devices that had weak ass GPUs, weak ass battery life. It just did not make sense for anyone to pick one of those things up. So I'm very happy to see that they do have something that can compete in that space. Uh, secondly though, if you're interested in a Windows laptop, I would steer you away from any of the older Intel devices, if you have the budget for it. Like I understand that there's gonna be some bigger sales on some of the older devices, but the difference is just too big to ignore. The third thing though is that I was hoping these would be better. Like when I got them in, I was running games, running benchmarks, and I thought this is way better than the previous generation of Intel products, but I'm not impressed. You know what I'm saying? Like when Apple Silicon first dropped and I was testing the M1 products, I remember thinking, these are impossibly good. Like how is Apple Silicon this good right out of the gate? I did not get that vibe here. So there's a part of me that's like very happy that Intel has something available. Like this is actually competitive now because most of the laptops in the world are running Intel chips, right? So the fact that they have something like this on their menu was really good for the for like the market. But there's another part of me, maybe it's just the enthusiast part of me that's like, why is this not better? How is it that they've had years to work on this, hype this up the way that they did? Like this is always like the most transformative moment for Intel's laptop industry, right? This is supposed to be the moment for them. But it's just, they've caught up. This is just the beginning. I respect that. And there's like, Plenty of room for this to grow, but they've just caught up. That's where we're at.